What's happening, you awesome Suhai AP Biology students, you? This is Mr. McLeod again. Welcome to our next podcast, which will serve as a pre-lab, provided I don't have to serve on a jury today and tomorrow. And you know how I feel about having to do that. I realize it's my civic duty, and I'm all for that. But, okay, enough about that. Sheesh, quit complaining, McLeod. Let's get on with it. Today we're going to focus on a population estimation technique which is often used to estimate population size of highly mobile animals like the monarch butterfly you see here in this picture and also the fish here you see in a lake. It's called the Lincoln-Peterson method but most biologists refer to it as the mark and recapture method. While the idea seems really simple, the actual performance of this technique requires a ton of planning and equipment. In the Lincoln-Peterson method, the species being worked with are captured, which can be the challenge. Then they are somehow marked. As you can see here with this butterfly, it can be as simple as tagging them with a number. However, sometimes tracking devices like you see above are harmlessly implanted on organisms like this fish you see. Once they've been properly marked, they are released back into their own population. So please write these two methods of marking fish and the reason we do it in your notes right now. Now once a population of fish has been captured and marked and some time has passed, biologists will then take a second sample of individuals at a later date like you see here in the pictures in this slide. In the case of the fish, they are captured by shocking them. You see the yellow rod this biologist has in his hands. See this yellow, these yellow rods, and you can see a wire actually attached to it right there. It sends a current of electricity into the water and temporarily immobilizes the local fish. They then float to the surface and are captured in the nets you see in this picture. Butterflies, on the other hand, are captured in the net you see here using pheromones. Pheromone is an attractive hormone that is given off by butterflies and used as a mate attractant. I'd like you to describe these two methods of recapture in your notes so you have a couple of examples to use in case a question like this appears on an exam. So go ahead and do that right now. Now, let's talk about what biologists actually learn from this method from two different scenarios. In the first scenario, if biologists recapture relatively few originally marked individuals, this indicates that the population is pretty large. Write that down. So if they recapture a group of fish and hardly any of them are marked, the population is large. Now in the second scenario, if the population were relatively small, more marked individuals will be present in the second recapture sample. Write that down. Okay, now let's talk about the statistical analysis involved in the Lincoln-Peterson method. Write each of the individual variables involved with the equation and their descriptions in your notes right now. So we're going to let capital M equal the number of individuals originally marked and returned to the population. Remember, we're capturing a bunch of fish from a location, marking them like a, uh, with a number or a tracking device, and then releasing them back into the population. We're going to let small n equal the second sampling of individuals from a population collected at a later time. Then r would equal the number of marked individuals recaptured at the second sampling so that the population size, capital N, is equal to capital M times little n divided by R. Make sure you get that equation in your notes as well. Okay, so let's use a simple example. Let's say we captured eight individual sand crabs like you see here in the picture. And then we mark them all, like you, like you see here, with a star. 
we then return them to the original population. Now a few weeks later we come back to that same location and we recapture 12 total crabs. So n would equal 12. And four of those are marked. So big R would equal four. If we plug them back into our equation for population, we see that the total population size, capital M times N in this case is 96, and we would divide that by R in this case, four, to get a total population size of 24. Make sure you understand exactly how we did that. Okay, now there are some important assumptions we must make when using the Lincoln-Peterson method. So let's try and make some sense of them. First of all, the two samples, the original and the recapture, must be random. Write that down. Now, what that means is that they can't be from the exact same spot. Write that down. Secondly, there can't be an, any additions of unmarked individuals to the population. This could be through births, so spring is out, or immigration, if there's a, uh, or if there were a fire or oil spill in an area, or even through a stocking ever effort like stocking a lake with walleyes. Write that down. Next is sort of the opposite, meaning any losses in that species from death or emigration have to be replaced by the same number of marked and unmarked individuals. Yep, get that in your notes. Okay, next those marked individuals must distribute themselves homogeneously. Write that down. And what that means is that you wouldn't mark an entire family of bears because they would stay together when you release them. You want them actually to spread out in the population relatively homogeneously. And lastly, the actual marking process can't alter the behavior of the animal. Write that down. For instance, marking a duck species in a way that somehow prevents them from pop proper flight, or pre uh, marking a fish so that it swims improperly, cannot be um, cannot happen. So make that explanation in your notes. Now, in order to make the Lincoln-Peterson method viable, you must also know a great deal about your population. So let's get some of what the information you need to know in your notes. First of all, you'd need to know the organism's reproductive history. Examples would be spawning seasons or any other behavioral changes during the year like migration, etc. So write that down. You would also need to know the mortality pattern of the organism. Write that down. Examples would be any mass die-offs that occurred. That mass die-off should affect marked and unmarked individuals the same way. So that's what we mean by mortality pattern. You would also need to know any effects of marking that organism like altered behaviors or any physiological effects of marking. Write that down. Now any seasonal patterns like migration or hibernation would also be something you would want to know. Get that in your notes. And lastly, you'd need to note any biases in capturing of animals like males versus females, old versus young, etc. Write that down. So you'd want to work to eliminate these biases because that would serve to increase the accuracy of the results. So make sure you get all those examples in your notes. You never know when a question like this is going to pop up on an exam. 
Okay, now it's time to put what you've learned to use. So go to Moodle, open up the Mark Recapture Lab Sheets, uh, and let's get started on this mini lab exercise. Thanks for listening. Bye.